Uh, this is Adam Kokesh, somewhere in Texas. Yes, sir. If you don't hear from me, and uh, All right, I don't know how long would this take, about 20, 30 minutes, please come, please come find me. Alex Answer, here it is, March 3rd in the year 2018. We're going to be taking a look at the arrest video of Adam Kokesh, which occurred in Wise County, Texas. For those that don't know where that is, that's just outside of Dallas as you're coming in from the West. What we're going to be discussing in just a moment is the way that Adam Kokesh handled himself. We're going to ask ourselves the question, was the arrest staged to boost his 2020 platform? And if it wasn't staged, giving Adam Kokesh the benefit of the doubt. If we were in the same situation as Adam, with potentially under two ounces of marijuana going into a state where it's illegal, how could our response to the police officers been a little bit different than it was because I will argue that Adam Kokesh through the first stop through the handing out of his freedom book gave the state trooper ammunition against him a bias included once that officer began to read from freedom never really met Adam Kokesh although we were in the same space in September 2012, at the Republican National Convention, it was the Veterans for Ron Paul campsite where I was a part of a group from Dallas where we came to film and support from Dallas, Ron Paul, with my friend John Burroughs, who was a registered delegate who had inside passes the whole nine yards. Now, I had a friend that actually donated to my cause if I would interview Adam Kokesh. And that was back in 2010. So I was excited to meet Adam Kokesh. This is before some of his behaviors, uh, what I would call stage arrest, to be fair. And if someone looks at the entire timeline, not to take away from the good things that he's done or some of his philosophies, there is a pattern of some of these publicity stunts. And I think that there's a number of people in the alternative media that are acting out of self-interest. For the record, I wish there were more people like Adam Kokesh that are... Uh, veterans, especially those with PTSD, uh, that would take part in the anti-war, anti-globalist movement. Sometimes I wonder if there's a reason why Adam Kokesh has had some of the ties that he has. So what I'm not going to do is get into all that drama that you can learn for yourself. What I can say is when I did meet Adam, um, I mean, it, it was uh, not exactly a situation where I felt I was me and the person that, that I saw something in and others. Um, it was someone that was there for the party, for himself, who wasn't interested in holding eye contact and basically meeting certain people. There was kind of an inner circle thing going on. I think some of you know what I'm talking about, where it was like the worship moment, and then maybe, you know, about the passing of a joint, and then going in the RV with a few girls. Um, so all I can say is, um, it's a trap to think some of these people are alternatives to the current system. You need to look a little closer at their, at their agenda. So I want to be fair here and not get into some of the things that I've become aware of with regards to Adam or being really fair. We're, we're going to look at this more from a perspective of how could we mediate a bad situation being pulled over by not giving officers an excuse or a resentment so we're going to talk about these things i'm going to show you the clip from a month ago unfortunately adam did time for that particular event clearly there's a reason he's staying quiet about the aftermath he said he was going to sue weiss county and we haven't heard follow-ups to that claim that he's going to sue um weiss county now immediately by his fourth girlfriend, Adams in jail, doing the um, doing the announcement. Uh, you know, it, it just so happens that Adam filed right before this, but he actually announced that he was running for president twenty twenty a very long time ago. Uh, but 
they were suggesting that this was done because he had just filed an hour ago something somewhere. See, the thing is, Adam Kokesh is passing through a part of Texas where they have an ongoing raid looking for marijuana, specifically in RVs, because they put an article about, they're bragging about how much marijuana they confiscated from California and from Colorado. These things are ongoing. It's happening in other states as well, including New Mexico. And some people just get a little comfortable. And see, the thing is, I smoke marijuana. But I'm not going to think that a little card with a Native American membership is going to save me. Or that it's smart to carry a certain amount when you're going cross-country. Going through an area where they're actually doing raids where they have drug sniffing dogs going through the same areas where they have the you know the border patrol you know within a hundred miles of the actual border of course he was a little farther up north so he was pulled over by officer one hey everybody this is adam kokesh uh getting pulled over here in texas so uh my dash cam's not working so i'm gonna broadcast this live for safety Here's the officer. Good morning, sir. How you doing? Hey, I'm with the highway patrol, sir. A couple of reasons for your stop. You got a job on the shoulder back there, but your plates are coming back expired as well. Oh, the, it's a temporary tag. It's not an expired tag. This was bought. I purchased this RV relatively recently, and I'm just waiting for the, the tags to catch up in the mail. If you run them, you, the, the temporary tag, you should be able to see that there's a, a live registration in Michigan uh, that this this been completed and, and it's just that the uh there's a live plate uh, associated with this vehicle have you just not got that yet then? yeah i live i live in arizona bought it in ohio registering it in michigan so it's like yeah kind of back and forth with the mail okay you know that kind of thing right. um, and, and i i apologize if i was a little distracted earlier i understand i understand you got uh, your driver's license with you and some information for the rv uh, insurance and whatnot um i i believe so let me i can give you uh see i can give you a driver's license that's that I got handy. I don't know uh, the paperwork for the RV. Might take me a minute if you really want to. Okay. If you want to if you want to wait for that, but there's a, there's a driver's license. Your dog got a bite? No, he's very friendly. Right. This is this is blue. Let's talk about this. You're Adam Kokesh. You already have a record. You're on probation, and you're traveling with a temporary tag, and you have no proof of insurance on you. Now, Adam Kokesh. I have like one aide, one friend that helps me with certain things. We all know he has many people that help him with websites, with legal support, and things of that nature. And then there's his father. Again, we're not getting into bashing at him. You can look up, though, the reality for yourself. So Adam has the finances and the time and the logistic support from many girlfriends that, that rotate and many associates that can help him get his papers in order. You don't want to be traveling with marijuana or other things without insurance. I've been in situations where they say we could search the vehicle and take the vehicle if you don't have insurance. So number one, he was let go with a warning. And I would say he was lucky. He did say when the dog came up, you know, you're you're not the cop that kind of likes to shoot dogs, are you? When When the cop was asking if the dog was safe. That's a rational question. I'm not a cop sucker. That's a rational question for an officer to ask when the dog comes up and is in front of the owner in a defensive, potentially getting ready to go offensive posture. But the guy took it quite well, and then you have a little camaraderie. A couple guys, you know, um, uh, veterans are highly respected in this nation. He has his, his tattoo conveniently there so we can be displayed for that privilege. U.S. veteran. I mean, he, unless, unless you're, uh, you know... Unless you're one of those one of those people who likes to shoot dogs. No. No. Okay. I'm okay with that. You got a uh, you got any information though for the, the vehicle? You got insurance, whatnot? Uh, yeah, I should. Give me uh, give me. I mean, if you don't mind. Good good job, Baloo. Good boy. All right. Let's see. You still in airport? Yes. Oh, you can tell from the stupid look on my face, huh? No, I saw your tattoo. Oh, it was a tattoo, huh? <laughs> All right. When'd you get out? 
Uh, November 30, 2006. You never forget that day, right? You prior service? No, sir. Oh, don't call me sir. I was a sergeant. But uh, hey, I wrote I wrote this book while I was in jail for civil disobedience. Okay. And you call it lessons learned the hard way, but it's a lot of stuff that uh, you know I learned from the from the Marines as well. Okay. No and uh, I think I think you'd appreciate it. And it's it's very important about uh, for what it says about police officers as well, because you know police officers serve uh, some very important functions in society. But it's very unfortunate that in, in doing so and in, in trying to serve the people, we have the government between us, you know, where you want to serve and protect, you want to provide legitimate services, but you have to, uh, fundamentally you work for politicians. And politicians don't work for the people, that's a myth, right? You know that. So what, what we're trying to do with the message in this book and with everything that I do in, in, in speaking out about this and talking uh -huh. about freedom is seeing if we can get more direct people to people connections, people serving people without this uh, you know, violent monopoly of government coming in between us. Right. So um, I hope you know that I'm, I'm, oh, no, I'm broadcasting no and, and all that, and, yes, and I'm just doing that in the spirit of accountability and, and you know, sharing my, my experience on the road here. So I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah, I got, this, I got this big pile of paperwork here for the RV, and I have, I have, I've never been pulled over in it, so I don't know where the insurance information is. Let's see, Belmont is approved. So it might be uh might be somewhere in this in this giant packet of paperwork you know that I got with this thing so I don't know if you what's that um, I think it's good Sam um, you know camping world I know I have some insurance through them I, you know actually you know what I have some bad news for myself here because I just realized the insurance paperwork is with the license plate that hasn't caught up with me yet. So I don't have it. And if, if you feel that you need to uh, issue some citation for that, I would hope that you would say pending submission of, of, of email proof of insurance because I do have it for this vehicle on the record. But I'm, I'm now that I think about it, I'm pretty sure that, uh, that, that I don't have any. But, I, but if you, you know, to be fair, if, if, if what you have to do is, is write me a citation for that, okay, I hope okay. you'd, you'd allow me some, some allowance for providing that proof of insurance. Uh, is, this, uh, is this still your current address, though? Yes, sir. Okay, where are you headed to now, then, ma'am? I'm going to a conference in Miami, the, uh, the North American Bitcoin Conference. You know about Bitcoin? The Bitcoin Conference? Yeah. All right, all right. Do, do, you, do you know about Bitcoin? Eh, I don't keep up with it too much. It's a little hard over my head, so. Oh, you keep up with how the U.S. dollar works and the Federal Reserve System and all that? I'll tell you what, I keep up with this right now. That's all, I'm, that's all I've been paying attention to. All, <laughs> all right, right. Man, let me get you, I'll fix you up a warning real quick, okay? All right, thank you, brother. I appreciate and, uh, that. You want me to do it this year? That's all yours. You sure about yeah, that? Yeah, it's free. We Don't worry. It's not like you're accepting some valuable gift. We, we give those away at events because, you know, it's more about spreading the message than, than making money. I hear you. So. I hear you. All right, man, let me fix this up real quick. I'll get right back. All right, you. thank you for understanding, right. sir. Yes, sir. I'll be right back. But, um, oh, wait, wait, wait. Look, check it out, guys. See, here he comes. You can see him coming up now. And so um, we can we can turn this around, and oh wait, you can actually turn the camera around while live now. That's a nice improvement. All right. Hello again, sir. Uh, man, I get you a sign right here for me. All That's right. A All right. Go on your record, no fine paper. Right? Awesome. Appreciate it. Appreciate your understanding. You're very welcome. I hope you'll take a look at that book. I will do that. I will do that. Here's a copy of this for you, too. Thank you very much. Right, Be careful. Drive safe. Have a good day. You, too. We won't talk about Adam lightly mentioning that he tortured someone over there. I would love, love to hear Adam's story about the torture incident in Iraq. A hero! Yeah, he tortured him. He's different now. I hope so. I truly hope he's a good man. I think he's been humbled through some of his jail experiences, but I still keep seeing the same Adam. So the officer lets him go. An hour later, 40 minutes later, he's clocked at 74 and a 65. And then doing the claim that, oh, my, my RV doesn't even drive that fast. And what happens is, and see, we don't know if that officer is put up to it, but we do know that Texas is a police state and they were doing ongoing drug raids. Here's an IV with, RV with a temporary tag. It's flying, to, flying through at 74 miles an hour. The guy's got no insurance. So then there's this long process of getting Adam to 
get out of the vehicle, which Adam felt was threatening, and then it was it was evangelical time. Well, I guess I'm free to go now. Mwah. Peace. Hello, how you doing, officer? Hello. If you're pulling me over about the uh, the temporary tag, uh, I was just pulled over actually about an hour ago no, and, sir, and got a warning. Tag. Okay. Sir, Texas Highway Patrol, the reason for the stop today is your speed, actually. I need to see your license. Oh, my and speed? Then, yes, sir. I was checked at 74 miles an hour in that 65 mile an hour zone. 74 and a 65? Yes, sir. Oh, well, I apologize. I didn't miss that. It was, it was a 75 right before it, wasn't it? Uh, a couple miles up the road. Oh, okay. You were well, I definitely know I wasn't going more than uh, than 74 because this uh, this vehicle has a, 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 a limiter on it. Okay, sir. But, so sure, yeah. License. Hey, look at that, guys. Two two in, uh, in less than an hour. There's a lot of fun in Texas here. All right. Well, there you go, sir. There's my license. Awesome. And uh, you're on you're on Facebook Live. That's my answer. Mr. Kokesh, you're being recorded as well by us, so it's all good. Excellent. Sir, yeah, do just, I, do, I do a YouTube channel and sir, you know, you stuff have, like uh, that. The insurance for the vehicle? Uh, I do not, actually. That's why I got a warning at the last stop, is that if you notice from the temporary tag, uh, I don't have my plate either, uh, I'm, and you can see from that, I, I reside in Arizona, this vehicle was purchased in Ohio, and so I'm just waiting to get it in the mail. Do you have any but, paperwork on the vehicle? Uh, I can show you the warning ticket I just got about that. Warning, is that what I'm asking for? I need to see paperwork that puts you with this vehicle. Uh, I, it would, Insurance, title, anything that says you just bought it, anything that puts you with this vehicle? Um, no, because if you look at it, it's actually uh, in a friend's name, so it wouldn't be in mine yet, and that's why we're waiting to get the registration okay. in my well, name. Here's what I need you to do. We're going to talk about this a little more in detail because okay. I need to make sure that this RV is supposed to be with you. So if I could have you step out here, grab a hoodie on. It's a little cold. Yeah, it's we'll really talk. cold. Yes, sir. You sure. We'll talk back here. All right. Yes, Put on a little beanie if you have one. All right. Well, we're going to talk about this some more. <laughs> yeah. All right. Going, going, uh, 74 and a 65 in Texas. And we're going to talk, so we'll have some fun with this. I'm going to bring him a copy of my book, get my uh, get my jacket on. I'm going to bring Baloo, because Baloo is my friendly ambassador for freedom. Uh, so Baloo, come here, sit. I don't want to, can't believe Baloo, you know, unattended in a vehicle. So we're going to get him here. Um... But you know, I think I think I'm gonna ask the officer. You know, now that I think about it, I think I don't I don't think I have to step out of the, the vehicle. Uh, let's see, sir, do you mind? Do you mind? Um, I don't know if it's an important distinction or not, but I'd, I'd like to stay in my vehicle. I have my my my, my no, dog sir, here. Y'all can stay in the vehicle, but I do need you to step back here. Well, no, I, I, is there is there a reason? I, yes, I'm, sir. We're gonna talk about it, but back here. It's just to talk. That? Is the reason just to talk? Well, we're going to figure some stuff out. Yes, sir. We're not going to do it with me having to yell up to that window. Oh, well, no, I'll be right here. It's fine. We can talk. Well, I'd rather not exit the vehicle. Sir, step to the back. I'm asking. Okay, well, if you're asking, I'm declining, but you're going to have to give me a, a reason other than you just want to talk because okay, because we can talk. Listen, listen to me. Look, I'll sit down right here. No, sir. No, sir. And listen we're to we're me. in the vehicle. Listen to me. I need your dog put up because he's a big looking dog and he may be real friendly with you, but I don't know how he is with anybody else. So if you can close okay. the door and step back here, you're recording me and I'm going to, I'm, that's perfectly fine. I think it's fair if I'm recording us too. You can record sure. me and let us both be on my camera as well. And we'll talk about it up here. I have some questions about the vehicle, about whose name it's under, where it was purchased, how we're going to tie the vehicle into you. I need to make sure it's not stolen and I need to verify all this stuff. We're gonna do it right back here. Well, if that's the case, we can do that right no, here. Sir. We're gonna do it right back here. Step back here with me. What, can you can you tell me why we're just talking? We can't right, talk Mr. right Kokesh, here. I want you to close the door because I can't focus on what you're saying. All right, I'll get I'll get I'll get Baloo out of here. Baloo, if you don't want to talk to Baloo, that's fine. No, we don't. can get him back. Baloo, Baloo, go to bed. Baloo, Baloo. Hey, 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 hey. Okay, Baloo, go to bed. Blue, go to bed. Chill out. Say okay. So he's out of the way. All right, I'm here, and I am I am happy and and free to talk to you from right here, sir. Okay. Okay. 
so here's my first question. I already informed you what you're stopping for, your speed. Yes, sir. 65. Okay. This is your license. You don't have insurance on the vehicle. I do have insurance in the vehicle. It's in my email. I could I could probably pull it up, pull it up. but I, I'd have to do it from my laptop. I can't do it from my phone because can't pull up your email from your phone. No, not right now. Okay. Well, I need to see insurance. Okay. The vehicle's not yours. Um, not yet legally. No, it's okay, it's in, in the, process the process of, of purchasing. transferring. No, I've purchased. Well, the the, the details of the financial arrangement are, are not necessary to discuss I, I don't need to know the details right. sir i just so, need to know is it yours yes or no it is mine okay so the vehicle's yours. It is in the process of being transferred is and registered in my name tag, in fact if, if, if you were to if you were to look up the temporary tag you probably you. see a proper registration uh in in my friend's name Correct. and but i don't want to say the, that the here but is, i can i can write it down for you the, the temp tag is now the it. registration so does the temp tag come back to you no who does the temp tag come back to you? my friend the one who had the original tag as well correct so your friend had the original tag and took out a temporary tag. For no, you? no, it was from a dealer. I'm sorry, but but what what's the matter? Like if, if I'm because am I not I, allowed I mean, to be driving a car that that belongs to somebody else? Is that is that a yes, crime? Sir, if you're allowed, so I need to find out who the owner. Well, is. no, you don't. You don't. Yeah, just yes. do you have reasonable Mr. reason Mr. to Kokesh, suspect that the Mr. vehicle? Kokesh, do you have reason a to suspect unauthorized use of a motor vehicle? Right. Do you have reason so to suspect if, that this vehicle is stolen or, or unauthorized? Well, I don't know. You haven't shown me any documentation that. If you don't have a reasonable you. suspicion of a crime, you Here's have. Here's what we're gonna do right you now. You have no reason Hold to on. violate listen, my Fourth Amendment rights. Listen to me. Here's what we're gonna do right now, okay? You're. I'm letting you sit here. Here in your area, right here. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make sure you don't have any weapons on you. And then you can remain sitting right there. I'm gonna go run this, just to make sure your license is clear, that you're not wanted, anything like that. I'm gonna come back out and we're gonna talk a little bit more. Once I check you for weapons, if you can please get your laptop and pull up the insurance, any title paperwork, anything that puts you with this RV. So if I could have you take two steps forward, I'm gonna pat you down right here. This is not an option and this is not a question. I am gonna pat you down for my own safety. Because you're sitting in an RV that I have no idea what's in there with a big dog and I'm allowing you to sit in the doorway off my camera. So if you can step here so that my camera can see me pat you down and then I will allow you to return to your seat. Okay, step I just, right I just, here. okay, I'm not resisting, I'm not, I'm not refusing. Okay, I just, right I'm just, I'm just, right now. I'm just clarifying. Need I need you to step right here Hold right on. now so I can pat so you down. If there's no urgency to this, I, I have a right to ask a clarifying question, do yes, I not? Sir. So on, on what legal authority are you searching my person? I'm not searching you. I'm going to pat you down. It's going to be outside the body. I'm not going to go into your pockets. I'm not going to dig in any pockets. I'm going to go outside the body and I'm searching for weapons, pistols, knives, anything you might have hidden in your big jacket, your... Sure. Sir, that, that's overcoat. still legally a search. But if you're telling no, me sir. that it's, it's just a safety pat down Listen search... I'm telling you to step forward right now. Instead of just deal with the situation and... Uh, not talk too much. Now, again, we fast forward or go back 40 minutes. The Freedom Handbook, written in jail and pretty much putting officers in their place for being thieves for the state. Now in the hands of the state, officers saying, yeah, this guy, Adam, he's fucking, gave me this book. And I said, dude, are you sure you want to do that? And the officer said that. Are you sure you want to do that? Officer one. And so there are other things, other mistakes, verbal mistakes that took place in this occurrence. So with guy two, He's not letting Kokesh off with veterans' privilege. Okay, He wants to see the insurance. He wants to see proof. And so they get to that point, and then Adam does the pat-down, continues to talk and try to recruit the other officers to maybe save him in the process, acting really, really friendly and narcissistic. Hey, I got a book. Hey, have you ever thought about your jobs? There's a bunch of thieves. What if we could just, you know, eh, just too much, man. All right. And I'm going to be able to keep recording yes, this the I, whole time. I haven't told you anything. All right. Well, this is interesting. I've never experienced anything quite like this before. So, but uh, you want to have me now for a little bit? I can have you face that way. All right. Hold on. This is a pat down for all you on Facebook. Look. See? Outside the pocket. I'm checking the pocket. Crushing the pocket. He's being very affectionate. There we go. All right. I'm fine that you don't have any weapons. You can sit back on your channel. I'll be right back with you. All right. Get the dog inside, please. Will do. All right, man. Mr. Kokesh, so the vehicle purchased in Ohio, where are you headed to today, if you don't mind me asking? 
I'm going to Miami. I'm going to the Bitcoin conference in Miami. Yeah. Hey, that hurt that stuff kind of went up in value, didn't it? Oh, it's gone up a lot. It's the future. Did you make a killing or did you, did you buy into it? That's how you got the, the thing? What, what, what's it up now? 10,000 of Bitcoin, something like that? A little over, uh, a little over 12 at the moment. Yeah. Over 12? Good deal. Good deal. All right. You said you're not traveling with any weapons. Correct. Can I, can I talk to you separately for a second, though? Because it's just just about like this encounter in general. I mean, we've got we've got two cops here for backup. Well, I, it, you know, we uh, we we work very close knit, and they sure. saw I've been out here for a longer period of time. So after 10 minutes, a little alarm goes off. Sure. People start showing up to check on me. Okay. And that's all this is. Okay. But they're cool. This is Trooper Gomez. This is Trooper Womack. A bunch of good dudes. We try to work, keep this highway safe, man. Sure, no, I, no, no, right no, now, no, this, this is this is what I want to say about that, yes, if, if I may, because we've been here for a while. We, yeah. you know, we've gone through a little bit of back and forth here. Yes, sir. I want to say that that, that for for the genuine intent of, of, of keeping the highway safe, you know, I, I really do appreciate that. That you know, you are providing society uh, a legitimate service. Yes, sir. And a, as an activist who who wants to fight injustice, you know, I see that uh, that it, it's really unfortunate that people like you who want to provide a legitimate service, who are trying to be helpful, uh, instead of being able to connect with me directly, you know, as, as, as a human being, you know, you have to have this, this sort of barrier, you have to have your guard up, you have to go through this process, I have to, I have Sir, to make I've, sure that... I've done nothing but speak to you as a normal human being. Well... If you had... With, with, if with, with, no, you've issued me a command. If, you issued me a yes, command under, you know, under a if, threat, if you know? If you had walked up and you had said, hey man, here's the insurance, this is my buddy RV, he bought it for me, here you go, here's the proof of it, this is this, all my ducks are in a row. Yeah, we can come back here and talk. That would have put me at ease. We'd have we'd probably already right. been out of here. But well, see, I just, I just, I just, I just went through a stop that was very similar, like less than an hour ago. Oh, did you? And they said it was, and, and the, the, the patrol officer was, was much friendlier, much more direct and accommodating. I gave him my license. He said, let me go back and run it. Okay. He didn't, he didn't have to, he did not have to verify that you know about the you know the insurance or being connected to the vehicle. So I don't know if you have a cop who's slacking, you know, in doing that, or if he's the one who's being the nice guy. Let but he's he which, set the standard uh, the, uh, that I expected you, coming to you. So when you come to so, me so with with like you, an extra ac yeah. accusation and extra suspicion, I have to assert my rights in order to defend my rights and make sure that, that you're not trying to pull something else here. That you're not yes. trying to come up with an excuse to mess with me in so some other let way. Let me ask you so, a question, please. Okay. If there were a criminal going down the highway, would you want that criminal to be stopped by the first one or the second one? And which one would be more thorough in getting the criminal off the road? Well, if there were, so, just a hypothetical. So you're using, yeah, no, no, it's a great question, but you're using a definition of criminal based on the government's definition, and that's a, that's a very bad definition. Right I, I don't want people I'm who asking, are I'm asking you know, you, peaceful to be bothered. It, okay, I'm asking you if I have your permission to make sure there's no contraband weapons, drugs in the vehicle. You do not have my consent to search okay, the vehicle. That's all I needed to know. Wait from right here. As far as the speed, you're going to be receiving a warning for 74 and a 65. Okay. Hang tight for me right here. Understandable, sir. What's up, gentlemen? Anything interesting going on today? I just got a flat tire fix. That was kind of exciting. Hey, me too. What do you know? At least it didn't blow out while I was going real fast. You know that. One. Right on. You guys enjoying the cold? No, no I live in Texas because I don't like the cold. <laughs> yeah, same here with Arizona. No, it's not natural. Yeah, this is nuts. Well, hey, can I give you guys something? What's that? Oh, I've only got one left. Maybe I'll say this for... Uh, for, for my, the officer who's pulling me over, but yeah, I don't know I'll, give you, I'll give you a sticker at least. This is the book that I wrote. I want to save. I want to save the book for uh, for the other officer if you don't mind. But you can take a look at there. And on the on the uh, on the sticker is the website, and you can uh, you can get the book for free there. Now you you get some time on the road, right? You get to listen to to audio books. Yeah. Yeah. So. The audio book is free online. But let, me, let me hang on to the book. Why don't you take yeah. the sticker? Take the sticker. Oh, no, it's okay. And, and no, please. It's got, the, it's got the website on it, so you can look it up later. And see, what I was getting at with the other gentleman was that when, you know, as a, as a police officer, you know, similar to, like, me in the military, you know, I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, yeah. And uh, you couldn't tell from the stupid look on my face? Sorry, that joke never gets old. <laughs> see? Anyway. Uh, no, but, like, you know, I joined the Marine Corps because I wanted to serve. I wanted to help. I wanted to put my life on the line 
to defend my country. And, you know, I found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution are not to be found in the sands of some far off land, but rather right here at home. And, you know, when, when we have people like you who are similarly willing to, to put your life on the line to serve others, I think it's a real shame that we have government in between us. You know, that like the other officer saying, would you, would you like a criminal stopped? Well, if the criminal's got a, you know, a busted taillight or an expired registration, no, I, I don't want that person stopped and bothered. You know, I want them to be able to take care of that uh, as easily as possible. And, and in that sense, we have the government, politicians, deciding who's a criminal, who's not. And, you know, you guys have to go out and enforce the law, you know, even if it's unjust. And I think that's, that's, that's a real travesty. That's a real source of injustice. I think a lot of the tensions between police and the communities where they work is because they're not serving the communities first. They have to serve their boss first, and they have to serve the politicians, and they have to serve government first. And obviously, the government doesn't represent the will of the people by any stretch of the imagination. So that's, that's what this is about. That's what freedom is about. You know, people being able to interact without uh, a coercive monopoly interfering with those relationships. And so, you know, I would love it if people like you who are doing this job were able to do it in a way that was truly in line with the needs of the people. And that's, that's really the focus, you know, at least uh, conceptually uh, of the book that, that, you know, I give to every officer I, I come into contact with that I get a chance. So for you, sir, I'm sorry, I only have one copy of the book left here on me that's, that's handy. I got a bunch more in boxes, but I'd like to give you a sticker if you don't mind. It's free as an audio book in that website has it on. I know you guys drive a lot, you spend a lot of time where uh, you can be listening to audiobooks and, and learning something, so I hope you guys would consider this perspective. Cool. Why'd you guys become cops? Uh, I, I did a bunch of time in the military and I've always wanted to be a state trooper, so... That was the reason why. I'm always wanted to be a cop. Well, what's, what's the why? Why is the why I always wanted to be? Because I was a child. No, but he's asking why. Why? Let's get to the deeper want reason, yeah. You want to serve my community? Make yeah. It, make a difference? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You too, right? Something like but that? I don't like the way people drive, so I feel like I can... I can <laughs> make people better drivers? Yeah, make people better drivers. Because my wife and kids drive up and down the highway. I want them to be safe when they're rolling around, so... But being relaxed and not acting nervous is, and acting confident is also a good strategy. It's just balance. Don't give them too much information. So, looking at what happens next. Okay, so we have the situation with the drug dog. So they say they're going to do a once-over. And somehow, it makes sense for the dog to remain inside his RV, which is believed to be the thing that alerted the drug dog. At least that's what we're being told. Because a drug-sniffing dog came around, Adam starts talking to the dog. The guy's like, don't talk to my dog as we do our job. And, um, you know, the dog stops at the door of the RV. Adam's dog is on the other side of the RV. Why was not the, the dog not brought out, first and foremost? And that's why they believe that these dogs are, are programmed and trained to alert on command. We have a canine officer who just arrived on scene. He's going to run this dog and conduct a free air sniff around the vehicle. If the dog alerts, at that point, we are going to search the Winnebago for drugs. And the dog is a drug sniffing dog. He, he won't detect firearms and he won't detect bombs, but he, he will detect drugs. So if he alerts, we will search the vehicle. If he doesn't alert, we've got your warning. We'll get you a warning. We'll get you out on your way. Does that sound fair? Well, that's what we're going to do. So, hang tight for me right here, sir. I know you said you have a, that big dog in there. Sure, I will close the door. Happy to. Can you step out here when you close the door? No. Okay. okay. Oh, but sir, as I was telling these gentlemen, I saved my last copy that I have available handy of this book right here for you. Because I was you telling can, you about you it. You can on to that and we'll get that here in just a second. You take that later? Yes, All right. So I don't know what this is. They're going to send a dog around the outside of the vehicle to sniff around 
and uh, you know it's very interesting. I don't know. I wonder if they're just gonna. If, if this is the typical, you know, they're going to uh, they're going to alert uh, because they're, yeah, they might alert because there's another dog. Um, might alert for um, for no reason at all, just because they want an excuse. And this this could be a stop where you know like they were coming after me from the beginning. This could be uh, this could be really interesting. I hope I hope Baloo's ready for this because it could be that you know when they pulled me over, they're like, hey, this is Adam Kokesh's vehicle, and uh, we we really uh, you know we need to we need to search. So uh, that we can have an excuse to uh, to bust him. So we'll see uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not too worried. As you know, I don't travel with any contraband. But uh, who knows? We'll see what happens. I'm gonna pause this for his safety. We're gonna have you stand right here outside of the RV. While he runs that. Okay, sorry, hold on. I got the orientation hey, wrong here. What'd you do? So I, I need you to step out of the RV so we can run that dog. Or I'm gonna have you step right here. You, we're not gonna take you anywhere else. You'll be in full sight of everything. So this is for that deputy and his dog. Safety. Okay. Well, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the engine and and lock the vehicle. All right. This is gonna be interesting. All right. So blue. No, you stay, you be a good boy. Alright. Alright, we're live again. And this is Adam Kokish. I'm here on the side of the road with, would you please introduce yourself again, sir? Right there. Trooper Garcia. Trooper, Trooper Garcia, Texas Highway Patrol. And uh, is it Gomez and Volkner? Womack. Womack. Yes, sir. Thank you. And we have our canine team here. What's up, buddy? Sniffing around the vehicle. Oh, hey, I didn't know that... From the handler. This is horrifying. So, what happens next is the dog goes around and the officer walks away for a minute. Adam did something that would get me tasered if this was the Portland police or somewhere else. When an officer says, stand right here whether you like it or not, if you decide to go walking 10 feet over here or 20 feet over there, they may attack you. Especially if you have a record. Adam has a record. Okay, they're able to go look and get an idea, and, and from their perspective, oh, this guy likes to mess, mess with cops. After basically giving the keys to who he's all about in his evangelical moment and his Facebook Live moment, because he's streaming us live on Facebook, not a bad idea. So by the time he went to jail, all this stuff was on Facebook. But again, was that part of the plan? Who travels without your current registration and having your many aides help you out with that. Going into Texas where they have ongoing drug raids and those of us that smoke on a regular basis, you know, we, we travel with marijuana. And Adam's like, I don't have contraband. It's a good thing I don't have contraband. Like as he's doing his live stream inside the RV with all the cops outside listening. They're going to interpret that as nervous behavior. He even said, oh, I got it from a dealer, which made the officer raise his eyebrow with regards to the RV. Even how we told his story about having the RV was just almost kind of, why not have that ahead of time? So here's the here's the kicker. Adam walks over and says, you, you could have got me for that. My my little compartment was open. That yeah, bin was stop. open there. And you see that's... Don't talk for the dog, please. Okay.
See, this is what you could have pulled me over for legitimately is that that, that cargo bin there was open and oh, you should I didn't notice. Good enough, sir. <laughs> 74 and 65. Okay. That was a legitimate stop. Alright, well I'm going to go ahead and secure this bin here. Because this is not safe. I got my firewood and my cone in there. Make sure that that doesn't fly over. Oh, that last one. Ah, there. Oh, no shit. Oh, well, maybe after this stop, I'll have to uh, get in there and take tight and uh, get that safe. And the officer's like, no, I, I got you fair and square on, on speeding, sir. And at that point, it doesn't seem like it's a big setup. It just seems like it's another cop being a jerk. I'm going to ticket you because you're giving me trouble and you're giving me lip. You're trying to make me look bad on the internet. And see, I've, I've played that guy, folks. And for me, it don't work too well. Cops don't like that. You got to be cool with that. You got to be careful which cops you come across. Other people are saying Adam broke his own advice. There's certain rules of thumb. You don't talk to cops about certain things and you don't start doing a live TV show to boost your ratings because the cops pulled you over. They may not like that. And they may attempt... So the thing is, giving Adam now the, the benefit of the doubt, like this was an accident. He didn't think things through. <laughs> if someone's a leader, we, do we really need to get in 2013, the march, our march in D.C.? When you see people purport to be leaders and make bad decisions, they're setting bad examples. They're showing that they don't have foresight. They're not thinking a few steps ahead. And that's the problem here. So there's four charges for Adam. One of them is tampering with evidence. I wonder if it was going for that compartment. Why would he go for that compartment? Did Adam think that by going for the compartment, the cops were like, oh, that's cool, dude. dude you're, you wrote a book. It's called Freedom. You have the freedom to put that stuff away. We're going to continue. But the drug dog, that, that's when the drug dog's in operation. He goes over and starts like fumbling with stuff like he's putting something away. He was doing the same thing inside the RV. Putting stuff in cabinets, blah, blah. Okay, I'm coming out, but I'm going to lock the door. And so the dog alerts. He says, we're going to the next level. Turn off the camera. He turns off the camera. He's arrested and taken to Weiss County. All right, Mr. Kokesh. At this point in time, the dog did alert, so we're going to a whole other level. This is PC. I need you to turn off the camera. And then we're All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is Adam Kokesh somewhere in Texas. Yes, sir. If you don't hear from me, and uh, All right, Mr. I don't know how long would this take, about 20, 30 minutes. Please come, please come find me. He said that they engaged in sleep deprivation. That they ran alarm any, every 20 minutes that kept them awake. That when he sat on the, toilet, the, the toilet, they set a, sent a woman in to check on him. But other than that, he said it was one of his more relaxing times in jail. So the last detail is, and we're just reporting the facts. I'm not attacking the person, reporting the facts. The bail money is raised just like a past incident, and then it goes somewhere other than intended. He doesn't pay the bell money. I'm not saying he should. I'm saying this is the tale of the tape. So money came in from the highly publicized arrest. And then he was released. And then he said he donated the money to the Libertarian Party. But in his last YouTube video, he seems to be attacking someone in the Libertarian Party. And I would assume for not getting behind the Kokesh. So he got Kokeshed. Yay, we can do a little dance now. Well, the groupies looking at uh, Adam with those tight pants. He's not unattractive, an unattractive male to those that are into that kind of thing. But he seems to be playing a role. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. I'm Alex Ansari, reminding you, the path to the ultimate truth and place of power still lies within. We'll see you in the next video.